Over the years, I've received a lot of questions about uh, shipping household goods to the Philippines. Uh, a lot of questions are concerning, a lot of questions are valid, and I've had some comments that just flat out say that we're crazy. But stick with me, and I'm going to share with you some of the reasons how and why. Coming right up. Hi, I'm Randy. This is Terry. In 2013, we quit working. We sold our businesses, our home, and two cars, and moved everything else to the Philippines. We built our home there, and four years later, we expanded our retirement adventure and moved to Guam. Now, we enjoy the best that both worlds have to offer, all under the tropic sun. Won't you join us as we share some of our day-to-day -day slices of living in the tropical western Pacific, which is our chosen paradise. Over the years, I consistently received emails with questions about shipping household goods to the Philippines. I originally laid out our experience in a blog article way back when, but as some of you might know, after nine years of publishing the blog, I finally put the retired and Samar domain to rest, and the articles are forever archived. So here I will try to outline some of the reasons why and how we shipped our household goods to the Philippines way back in 2013. I'll note here that when it comes to dealing with Philippines customs, very little has changed. There is also a lot of confusion and misunderstood information that is bantered about in some of the blogs, forums, uh, online, and, and on YouTube channels. And a lot of this information can lead to some really unexpected and unfortunate situations if not fully understood. Shipping one's household goods to the Philippines and have to deal with customs as it applies to import taxes, storage, demurrage fees, ad valorem taxes, and all that. All that should be fully understood before making any decision to use container shipping to the Philippines. Most times people will simply avail of using a big buy-in shipping service where you can ship almost anything that you can fit in a mostly square box, regardless of weight. Uh, Blick buy-in is door-to-door -door and is very convenient. Blick buy-in boxes can uh, essentially be shipped for a flat fee and are a great option for sending personal items. But that's totally different from using a major shipping company to ship large items and, in our case, an entire household, which I will discuss here. Basically, if I turn back the clock nearly three decades, I wouldn't be on the topic of shipping. But during those 27 years that we lived in the United States, we sure did accumulate a lot of things. And because our mountain of stuff consisted of many things we had worked so hard for over those years, things that were hard to replace and things that held much sentimental value, we basically decided that everything we owned was going with us. So everything that held any meaning to us was to be packed, crated, and shipped including most of our furniture. After filling a 20-foot container, we needed another 8-foot overflow crate for the stuff from the garage and shop. Our cost to ship everything at that time was just under 12,000 US dollars, which included packing, insurance, door-to-door -door delivery, unpacking, and up to one month storage in Manila prior to delivery to our home in Samar. We felt that we just couldn't replace everything for that price, so the decision was made to ship it all. And I did make sure my kayak, my tools, bicycles, and all three barbecue rolls were included. Another reason we chose to ship everything is because we could avail of a total customs import exemption. Everyone's situation may be different, and ours was planned under the rules that applied to us. I'm a foreign national married to a returning Filipino citizen who held a 13A visa, which allowed me for a full exemption for the importation of our household goods. There are many different variations for the shipping of personal goods covered under Philippines customs and importation laws, and it's imperative that anyone looking at importing anything become familiar with their particular status. I believe in certain cases now, even just a returning Filipino resident might be qualified for household good exemptions uh, as long as they travel back by themselves. But in my case, I needed to obtain my 13A 13A visa before I arrived in the Philippines, which made our exemption uh, free importation possible. It's much easier 
to apply and obtain the 13A visa while still in the United States. The only source of information available to us at the time uh, was through the Bureau of Customs. And it's mostly still likely the only trusted reliable source of information for anyone looking to ship uh, goods to the Philippines. Another good source might be some of the companies that actually ship to the Philippines. I'll leave a link to the uh, Bureau of Customs in the description, below, uh, description box below for your uh, reference later on. Remember that we shipped our goods nearly eight years ago, and while most of the rules may still be the same, there might be some minor revisions that could apply to every situation. Also, one should consider there are many different immigration statuses and visa types, so be sure to check out the Bureau of Immigration and the Bureau of Customs sites thoroughly. Do not rely on some second-hand information that you read in some blog or watched on YouTube as the basis for making any decisions. Allied Moving and Storage is the company that we chose to pack and ship our household goods from our Mississippi home. There are several companies that offer international shipping and most can be found easily on the internet. But Allied was in close proximity to us and after interviewing a couple other companies, Allied just left us with, a, with, with the best feel good. We were able to save a little money by packing many of the boxes ourselves as most shipping companies will charge for packing materials and labor. The one thing I did was to, uh, I acquired some used rolls of leftover newsprint, a newspaper print from a local newspaper publisher, and it, and it makes the perfect wrapping and packing paper. Once we had everything packed that we could pack ourselves, we were ready for Allied. They finished packing and wrapping everything that we couldn't, and then they loaded it onto an Allied moving van. It was then transported to Memphis to be repacked in, into the shipping container and an eight foot wooden crate. From there it was delivered over the road to Seattle and was consigned to Rainier Overseas Shipping. Allied took care of all this. Rainier arranged for the cargo shipment into the domain of the Golden Dragon. Once it arrived in Manila, it was reconsigned to Getz Moving and Storage in the Metro Manila area, where we had to claim the shipment with all the documentation that was provided to us. Getz actually did most of the work for us, including clearing the containers through customs. Our shipment was never physically inspected as the original seals that were affixed uh, to the containers in Memphis were still intact. Once we finished all the paperwork, we headed back to Samar and waited for our delivery day. The really tricky part of this entire ordeal was that to be technically qualified for the customs exemption, I needed to arrive in the Philippines and be processed as a 13A non-quota immigrant before our household good shipment actually was presented to customs. Although guests moving and storage would be representing me during the customs inspection, they could only act on my behalf as long as they were in possession of my 13A non-quota immigrant application and all the paperwork. As it turned out, the shipment actually arrived just days before I actually applied for my ACR card and Getz managed to hold off customs until I was all good with the BI. All in all, the entire shipping process seemed more stressful than it really was. Most likely, it was compounded by our fear of the unknown. All three companies involved were above reproach and were nothing short of professional. We experienced absolutely no damage and were very pleased with the eventual outcome of being rejoined with our familiar. And of course family was right there to help us get settled into our newly completed home. We have asked ourselves this question time and time again and the answer remains the same. Yes, we would, with some reservations. If there was one thing I could do over, it would be to leave all of the electrical appliances and power tools behind. Uh, since arriving in the Philippines, I've lost a few power tools, a flatbed scanner, a couple three kitchen appliances, and some other, other less notable 110 volt devices, all lost at 220 volts. It's going to happen. Now I know all these items could have been purchased in the Philippines. The only other notable issue we still have is the amount of high-end solid wood furniture we brought with us. If it were not for the fact that we keep the house closed up and fully air conditioned, we would probably have lost some of it, if not a lot of it, to termites. 
Some would look at this cost of preserving our furniture as an added expense, but we wouldn't have it any other way. Considering that we would not choose to live in the southern United States during the hot and humid summer months without air conditioning, why would we feel any less motivated to live in the Philippines without that added comfort? For us, that would not be a comfortable retirement. To each their own, right? The way we look at it, we built our retirement home and filled it with everything that is familiar to us. So it is like the home we never really left. It's just been relocated halfway around the planet. It just feels better that way.